We've been very lucky with the weather so far, but it can't last forever. If it's a little rainy, a tent would work well. But what if it's really rainy, or windy, or snowy? Maybe we could put the audio system inside the car. But antennas need open space, and the metal in the car blocks radio waves. So what can we do? When I talked to people with audio experience, they said, with so many wireless mics, you need antenna distribution. That means using just a few antennas to send the signal to all your receivers. If you shop for products that do this, it's between $400 and $1,200 for eight mics, and I would need several of them. That's getting a bit expensive. Kem Stewart and Jan Helbers knew how to do, so, do things like this, and they designed a do-it-yourself version. Here's what we're building. Instead of every receiver having a bunch of antennas sticking out the back, we're going to put just two antennas outside on top of the car. The FM trap filters out FM radio station frequencies so that they don't get amplified. The antenna preamp boosts up the signal so that it can get through all the splitters and still be strong enough. All this is on the roof of the car. Then a cable brings the signal inside where a series of splitters deliver copies of the signal to the back of every receiver. So we ordered some parts online and started putting it together. We depend on radio for both the microphones and to send the choir sound back to the singers. To understand how radio devices work, or not, we need a thing called a spectrum analyzer. An RF explorer is a portable spectrum analyzer. It listens to many radio frequencies and tells you which ones have activity on them. 88 to 108 is right around here. So now we're going to zoom in around 105 or 6 or so. Now I'm looking at just 103 to 106. So now you can see individual radio stations. There's a good strong one at 104, this one here, 104.5. Here's a tiny FM transmitter. It, it can be set to 106.1, and I have the RF Explorer looking right around that area. So when I turn on the FM transmitter, we should see some interesting stuff happen. So you see a little spike? There's now a little peak and it's labeled 106.1. So I turn the, turn the transmitter off, it's gone. Turn it back on, and there it is. So the RF Explorer gives you ways to sort of understand what other devices are broadcasting out there and what frequencies to choose and measure the strength of your own stuff. We can also plug the RF Explorer into a computer and get much better resolution and see the individual channels. My wireless microphones, the manual says they can transmit from 550 to 590 megahertz. So I've done a scan from 550 to 590. Now you see that there's, there's some empty spots, but there are also some blobs here. So it turns out these blobs are UHF TV channels. They, they're about 6 megahertz wide, and in each different city, there are different channels. So depending on where you are, you might have great luck um, putting all your wireless microphones in this blank spot or this rank blank spot, but then you travel somewhere else, like a different metro area entirely, and you'd have different channels, so you'd have different blanks. Uh, so I'm going to turn on a wireless mic, and we should be able to see what channel, uh, what frequency it starts to use. It's about six feet away, four feet away maybe. So you see a big blue spike. Um, so this this red thing is the average. So the average is gradually creeping up because now it keeps getting readings that are pretty high right at this frequency. 569.275. That's the frequency that this mic is using. Now, for some reason, GTD audio mics like to make another little spike that's a little bit higher and no one exactly knows why. I think that's an accident, but it, at least it's smaller than <laughs> smaller than the real spike, but it's, it's definitely there. So I've taken the mic into a different room behind some stuff. There's some furniture, there's a wall in the way. Now the signal's down to minus 55. Okay, I'm going to turn on a bunch of wireless mics all at once, just so you get a sense of what happens to the spectrum.
13, 14. You got the idea. Each microphone makes a different peak on a different frequency. Even 24 mics, it does work, but it's pretty messy and crowded in the spectrum. If I was buying more mics, I would be choosing ones in a different frequency range, like 900 megahertz, so that they don't collide with these. Here I think we see four mics, so that's just, <clears throat> that's just one microphone. To see how much the new antenna system helps, we have to try without it. Here we've put the audio system inside the car with the tailgate closed, just to see how bad it will be. Testing. Test, test. Not yet. It's not here yet. Oh, there. Now I hear there myself. We go. There we go. So we were almost to the mailbox. One, two, three, four, there five. We go. There, there we go. There we go. go. Yep. Six, seven, okay. eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so that was about... So the range was pretty awful. It was a little bit better in the back. Next, we tried with the tailgate open. Test, 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 Oh, there test. we go, there we go. Okay, so yep. right about where that tree was, sort of partway through the yeah. yard. It had pretty good range if you're looking straight into the back of the car, but from any other angle, it was just as bad. We're gonna hook up Jan Helber's antenna, which is this guy. This is the antenna module. We're gonna hook that up to the system. Jan's antenna module is gonna receive the microphone signals in these two, and then it's gonna travel through wires, it goes through some splitters, and end up feeding the back of these. So, I'm gonna take off all the antennas from the back. So now all the white wires, these are coming out of the splitters. These are all gonna go onto the receivers. This is the FM transmitter. I'm gonna take its radio, its um, antenna off, and put it up there. This, on top of the roof. So Jen put rubber feet on this thing, because we, we know it's gonna be sitting on top of a car, we don't want to scratch it up. One thing people say is that the receive antennas should be at 90 degree angles to each other. So if I put them both at 45 degrees, they should be right angles to each other. There it is. It does look like a spaceship. Woo. Now there are going to be four cables coming out of the car. There's the power cord and then the three radio cables going up to the roof. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh boy. Hello. There we Hello. go. Hello. <laughs> uh oh. The range was yeah, worse than before. Possible. What was wrong? It turned out that I had hooked up some of the A cables to the B ports accidentally while making this video. After we fixed that, it worked great. Test, test, test. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, that's much better. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I don't hear it. What did I do? It's because I turned the freaking radio off. 12, 13, 14, 15. The range is a little better in the back because the antennas are near the back and you have line of sight. From the front, you have to look through some metal to get to the antennas, and so there's less good range in the front. Of course, you need to reach the mixer, so we're thinking of setting it on top of the tailgate like this. Or if the weather is really bad, how about in the passenger seat? and then roll up the windows. We'll use the antenna unit for our next event and leave the system in the car. That should make setup a little easier, and if it starts to pour, we can just keep on singing. If you want to make one, we've published the antenna unit diagram and part list on the website. The parts added up to around $400. But remember, that's compared to thousands if you buy an antenna distribution system. Thanks so much to Jan Halbers and Cam Stewart for their contributions. And if they catch nothing, they never...